Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the effect of mirage on visibility when you're shooting 500 yards, okay? Uh, we're also going to talk about wind and we're also going to talk about sun glare, okay? Uh, now these are things that a lot of times when people do scope reviews, they don't talk about, okay? Uh, so these are like on the average day, right, where I'm shooting 500 yards plus, uh, I have to contend with these things. Um, and these are going to be like some of the more important challenges uh, that I have to deal with. Okay, uh, so I'm always shooting under, almost always shooting under less than perfect circumstances. So I've posted a number of videos uh, over the last couple of years where I'm shooting 500 to 1,000 yards, uh, and I've I've done a lot of videos over the past year where I'm shooting 500 yards, and we're going to talk about the last two times that I was shooting that distance. Okay, so. Uh, the last two times I went, um, I shot, I was using these two scopes from Primary Arms. Okay, they're both on Palmetto AR-15s. Uh, this one's the Primary Arms 1 to 10 uh, first focal plane GLX, okay? So there's a 1 to 10 GLX, and uh, this one is the 1 to 8 PLX, okay? Um, so this is, I mean, these are basically both premium scopes. This is a $1,500 one, right? And... The other one is like a seven hundred and seven hundred dollar one. Okay, um, so the first uh, again, last two times I I was at the last two times I was at, at the five hundred yard location. Um, the first time I went of these two, I had set up this target here. Okay, so this is this target. This paper is half the size of a man. Okay, so it's twenty three by 35 inches okay so I basically that's a belt uh, head to belt basically okay and uh i had intentionally used a gray bullseye because i wanted to see if i could see it at 500 yards okay so first i actually shot 400 okay so this is with the 1 to 10 glx okay so at 400 yards i can i can see the gray bullseye um and i shot a, uh, I shot six and a half inches at 400 yards, you know, perfectly centered. That's 1.6 MOA, 400 yards, right? Nice, nice, beautiful group here. Um, then I go back to 500 yards, okay? So at 500 yards, okay, um, I did two groups of five, and I got seven out of, out of the, you know, total 10, 10 shots. So I got seven out of 10 on the paper, okay? So the seven out of 10, uh, came out to 17 inches, which works out to a three and a half, uh, actually a 3.4 MOA. Uh, so the interesting thing here is even at, even at 500 yards, I could see the gray bullseye and I could actually even see the, 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 the dust cloud off to the left of the ones that missed. I couldn't see the impact, but I could see that there was like a dust cloud, which gave me an indication that there were some misses. And they were going to be off to the to the left. Okay, so if I was going to shoot some more shots, okay, I would have basically held right a little bit. Um, so so that was my now. Why did this happen? Um, so at basically at the spot that I was shooting from, I, I couldn't feel any wind, uh, primarily because it's it's in a closed position, right? Uh, there was like a hill on one side, so there was no wind there at the. Spot at the point where the bullets were arriving, where the target is, it was also enclosed by trees, so there's no wind there. But in the middle, I'm shooting like across a valley, um, and there was some wind there. Now it turns out the wind was from behind me, all right, uh, and it, it was very, very, very light wind. Uh, but apparently, okay, based on the effect of the bullets, and I already saw at 400 yards they were like perfectly centered, but based on the effect of the bullets. Uh, I could see that the, the bullets were pushing slightly to the left. So under those circumstances, it would have been impossible for me to tell that there was a wind that was pushing slightly to the left uh, because it's just I couldn't feel any wind where I was at, right? The wind was someplace in the middle. However, because I could see the dust cloud off to the left, right, I could visibly see that, hey, there must be some, the bullets are pushing to the left. If I had to, if I was going to take some more shots, I would have held slightly to the right. Okay, so what I'm getting at here, right, as far as the wind, um, what I have found in the shooting that I have done, like right, 
a lot of times people will look at the wind ribbons or, 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 or some type of a wind indicator and they'll try to uh, judge what their hold should be for wind. <laughs> um, what I have found from all the times I've been shooting at distance is the wind lies, okay? It does different things at different points. Um, I have found it a lot easier. Now, obviously, if you can feel the wind push, like feeling, feel the wind pushing on you in one direction or the other, yes, you can adjust a little bit for, you can adjust for that. Uh, but what I have found to be more useful is if you can spot the impacts and make corrections off of that, that's probably going to yield the most true results, okay? So, uh, in this case, with the uh, uh, 1 to 10, with the 10 magnification, because I was in 10, 10 magnification, uh, I could see the dust clouds off to the left. So, I knew that, hey, if I was going to take more shots, I would have held just a little bit to the right, okay? So, but the important thing, um, uh, actually, the, the more important part here is that I could see the bullseye, okay? This gray bullseye. Because, and that's important because the following week that I went there, same paper, same gray bullseye, I could not see the bullseye, all right? Let me, let me get this paper. So one week later, I'm at the same location, same size target, 24 by 36, 500 yards, same gray bullseye, right? Came off the same roll of duct tape. I put it here. Uh, now, first I am shooting the 128, which I have shot before, right, at, at, at this distance. And normally I can see the gray bullseye, okay? So I thought it was kind of odd that I, I couldn't see it, uh, even though it's the other. Previously, I was, it was a 1 to 10. There's a 1 to 8. Usually I can see it with the 1 to 8. I didn't think too much of it. Um, I basically thought to my to my head, hey, it must be it must be because uh, I don't know because it's only eight magnification. So whatever. What I did is I used the entire paper to center the two mil line. Or actually, it's a, this is a a, a bull drop. This is the M8 Raptor. So I'm I'm using the 500 yard uh, line. I'm centering it across the paper as as best as I could um, to get my shots. Okay, so. I got four out of five on the paper. One, two, three, four, four shots. That's nine and a quarter inches uh, for 1.9 MOA. Okay, so I couldn't see the, the bullseye. I'm not, I, at this point, I didn't realize why, but I just knew that I couldn't see it. All right, so then I go to the one to 10 uh, scope over there, right? The GLX, one to 10. Okay, so that's this one. Same gray bullseye, okay? 10 magnification, 500 yards, okay? Uh, so, to my surprise, with the 10 magnification, I cannot see the gray bullseye, which is strange because I knew for like 100%, right, maybe maybe I was second guessing myself with the 1 to 8 scope, but with the 1 to 10 scope, I remembered very clearly that the week before, I could see the bullseye on this paper, okay? So, I'm looking at it, I'm trying to figure out what's going on, and then now I have 10 magnification, what I what I realized after looking at it for a few seconds is I could see the the mirage, the little bloom coming up like that. Right, so that was a mirage. So what was happening is the mirage was causing some distortion, and whereas the previous week I could see this gray bullseye at the same distance, right? This week because of that mirage I could not see that gray bullseye. So it was hotter. Okay, it, it was it was a hotter day, uh, and. I don't think I don't think it's the heat that causes the mirage, but I think it's like the heat causes a, a difference in the pressure, and the pressure I believe is what's causing the mirage. Regardless of the science behind it, I could see with the 10x scope that there was some mirage. I could I could see a little wavy pattern, and I could tell that that was the thing that was that was preventing me from seeing the bullseye. Okay, so that was the effect of of the mirage. Now. I was able to uh, use the two mil line, the two mil line, right, because this was a mil grid. I was able to use the two mil line centered across the uh, uh, the target here, and I got four out of five hits. One, two, three, four. Okay, four four out of five at the 500 yards for a 2.2 MOA. Okay, um, so the interesting thing there was that the mirage was preventing me from seeing this uh this bullseye now the thing that uh and i did talk about this in another video 
it's another video, the way that this reticle with this magnification is set up when I'm centering it here, uh, this the, the line appears thicker. Okay, and, and it's 10 magnification, the line appears thicker. Uh, and even though I couldn't see the bullseye, I could center it across the paper. When I had the uh, the um, went to 8 PLX, um, that line appeared thinner. So it looked more like this. So it was, and also the target was smaller because it's almost, it's only 8 magnification. So that made it a little bit harder for me to center on the paper. Okay, so in both cases, whether I was shooting the 8X or the 10X, okay, both the target, the target was a little bit, uh, it looked blurry because of the mirage, right? There was that distortion, so it was a little bit blurrier, um, and I couldn't see the bullseye at all. In both cases, I was still able to get four out of five hits on the target, right? So I don't need absolutely perfect conditions to be able to, to, to hit the target, okay? So um, what did help, what did help is with the 10 magnification, because the target was a little bit bigger and the, the holding line um, at, you know, the holding line that I was looking at in 10X was a little bit thicker, I was able to better center the two mil line across the target uh, and my hits basically were in the center. Okay, so so that's the thing that that made the difference, right? Um, and, and in both cases, I got four out of five hits. Uh, the interesting thing here is like, okay, what kind of misses did I get with the um, with the one to eight? Okay, which which basically the target appeared a little bit smaller, right? With eight magnification, and the 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 holding line was thinner. Okay, I had a more difficult time centering it on the paper, right? And apparently I was holding it a little bit off to the left, so the miss was off to the left over here. Okay, uh, depends on uh, depends on which. Yeah, for you guys to the left over there. So so the miss was off to the left because. You know, because I wasn't able to perfectly center it. Now, people are generally long, right? So, uh, missing left or right, um, you know, it, it basically is going to increase the chance of a complete hit, right? Because people, you know, people aren't very wide. So, if you're going to miss, if you're going to be off, you would rather be high or low rather than left or right, right? Because if you're if you're high or low, there's a better chance that you maybe get a headshot or you get a hip shot. If you're left or right, better chance that the, that the bullet's just going to go past, okay? Um, so when I went to this one, okay, so this is now with the 1 to 10, okay, so I got four shots here, 1, 2, 3, 4. What happened here is this, the, this doesn't have a bullet drop compensator, right? Because the, the M8 Raptor is a 5.56 five, bullet drop compensator. Uh, if you can get that centered on the paper, it's, it's, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be like the elevation should be perfect. Okay. With the, with the mill grid, uh, they're just mill lines. Okay. So you have to, it, it just so happens that at 300, 400, 500 yards, they're very close to what 5.56 five, would impact. But because it's it's a mill grid, not a bullet drop compensator, what I did is normally I, I have to hold a little bit lower, right? When I had when I'm shooting two mils, the two mil line on this scope. And what I did is instead of holding a little bit lower, I think I just centered it across the paper. Uh, and that's why the impacts were on the high side. And I got one, two, three. Uh, where are you? One, two, three, four. Okay, so the miss went went high. Okay, so a high miss could be a headshot, right? Or it could be, you know, a, or or you know. So but again, if you're gonna be, if you're gonna miss, you're better off missing, being off rather. If you're gonna if you're gonna be off, you're better off being off vertically than horizontally, just because of the shape of a person. Okay, um, but the, the the point here is. <laughs> The effect of mirage, which I think, you know, a lot of times, uh, there's very few videos out there that cover mirage, right? And usually when we're talking about mirage, 
uh, we're talking about using it uh, to basically judge the wind, okay? So um, if, the, if you're seeing a plume that's going straight up, uh, you either have no wind or the wind is in front of you or behind you. Um, if, if you have a plume that's going left or right, you can you know which way the wind is blowing and you can compensate for that. So that's what, when people are talking about mirage, that's what they're, what they're talking about and they're trying to use it as an aid to judge the wind. What they don't talk about, or I've not heard people talk about, is how it can, it can obscure the target a little bit. Um, and it's one of those things where it's like you have to get a little bit of practice uh, shooting at less than perfect images, right? Because, and the interesting thing here is when I was shooting it with the 8X, right, I could not tell that it had Mirage. Because all I could see is, okay, I can't see the, I can't see the, the bullseye, okay? I don't know why. It's not until I got to the 10X that I, I could see the waves, right? Because I now I had more magnification. I could see the waves and I knew, oh, okay, the reason why I can't see the bullseye uh, is because of Mirage. Now, with the 10X, uh, the detail of the Mirage was not enough that I think I could judge the wind, wherever it's going. I mean, because I couldn't, you know, I, I, I couldn't see the boiling. There's normally, like, uh, the Mirage kind of, like, boils up. I couldn't see that. Uh, it just, I, all I saw was, like, a little bit of flickering. So you really need, you need, like, 15 magnification plus to really be able to see the details of the Mirage uh, and try to hold for wind, Okay. Uh, so when you're shooting with a typical LPVO that, let's say, goes up to uh, 8x, right? If you are shooting at 500 yards, you're not going to you're not going to know that you've got Mirage. You're just going to be like, okay, I can't see the bullseye. Okay, you're not going to know why. It's like I just can't see the bullseye. With the 10x, I was able to like I was looking for the bullseye. I was able to see that hey, there's a little flickering there. That's the reason why I can't see the bullseye is because of the mirage. Okay, uh, but I really I don't think I don't think I could see well enough to make any decisions off of it as far as a left or right or wind hold. Okay, so um, so that that's interesting. Now the other thing is like at same location shot 500 yards, uh, the the sun basically sets in front of me, and uh, I've done I covered this in a different video. So that's another thing that can like really obscure your vision. Um, and, uh, you know, I've actually, I've shot like 400 and 500 yards where instead of taking, like, you know, like normally when you, when you, when I'm shooting, I'm holding the back of the stock and I'm, I'm placing in my shoulder. I've, I've shot those distances, uh, where the, the sun was like, just like, even with my hat trying to, I, I just, I still had sun coming in at that angle. And what I ended up doing, right, is shooting the gun like one handed because I was using my hand. To try and like block the sun um and i i shot basically you know one hand up here at 400 and 500 yards i i still got hits on paper at 400 500 yards i don't i don't remember the exact groups uh they weren't as tight as this right i don't think i was hitting uh what i get here i don't i got a 2.2 moa at 500 and a 1.8 no no a 1.9 moa at 500 okay so I don't think that the groups were this tight at 500, uh, but I, I still got I got still got hits on paper at 500, shooting one hand, one handed, trying to shield the sun out of my face. <laughs> I mean, there's other things that people talk about that you can do. Uh, uh, obviously, if you can move your hat a little bit, I just couldn't, you know, put a sun whatever. Sometimes you 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 know you may not have a hat. You, you just gotta make it work, okay? Uh, so the, the, this is like some of the practicality. Of, of shooting at distance so um a lot of times when when i look at because i look at other people's reviews too right um when people review scopes um and a lot of times they they're talking about like the clarity and the colors and um you know on an average day okay you're going to be shooting under less than perfect conditions you're even going to have a sun glare or you're gonna have mirage like I had last time, or you're gonna have wind. Um, so the question for me is like, how, how can the scope help me overcome those things, okay? So what I have found, right, and this became very evident the last two times I shot 500 yards, uh, what does help me um, is having a larger target, okay? So 10X was easier to shoot at, was more comfortable to shoot at, uh, versus 8x. Okay, so having a larger target uh, was was more comfortable for me to shoot at. Having a reticle 
that at your max magnification is, is, is properly sized because you don't, want the, you don't want your reticle to be so thick that it obscures the target, but you don't want it so thin that you can barely see it over the target, okay? So having a reticle, right, that is properly sized at the max magnification, all right, so that, you know, you can, you can see it and you can center it without it obscuring the target, that really helps, okay? Um, so with the first focal plane scopes is as you zoom in and out, the reticle size is gonna change. So the, with the uh, with the um, the reticle that's in there, one to ten GLX, the M10, I I think that's the best reticle. I mean they've got that perfect, okay, uh, or very close to perfect. Uh, the M8, which is a prior generation, which is in the PLX, that's a very good reticle, but I think they improved upon it with the M10, okay. Uh, so so I found that the M10 reticle was like. A good was at, at, at 10x was like a good thickness where I could center it over the target that was larger because of the magnification. So that's something that was useful. That's something that mattered. Um, I mean, as far as like again, a lot of times people will talk about the clarity and the, it, it, with the mirage, the target was blurry. I was shooting into a blurry target. So I had to take the reticle and center it over the blurry target. Okay, uh, and, and I was able to get my hits. So. Uh, that's like the practicality at shooting at these distances. You've got, you know, you got mirage. Not all the time. Sometimes you may have mirage. You may have wind. Uh, for the wind, it really helps if you can spot the impacts or at least see dust clouds. Okay, so that helps. Um, and uh, you know, th these are the things that that you have to contend with. And you know, and then of course, there's different bullets. Uh, as you, one of the things that I found is that when you use different ammunitions over that kind of a distance they can have a change. So with the 77 grains that I was shooting, I had to adjust uh, like one mil to the left specific to that ammunition. Like normally if I'm shooting at closer distances, I don't have to make those kind of adjustments. But when you're shooting at 500 yards, yeah, you really gotta fine tune your scope to that specific ammunition uh, that you're shooting. Okay, so uh, drop some comments below. Let me know what you guys think and we'll talk again soon. We're comparing here two different reticles uh, under different magnification. Um, so you want, you, what you want to do is look and see how your eye is able to pick up not just the target under different magnifications, but also the reticle, which changes size under different magnifications. Now, this was a hot day that I'm videoing this, so there is mirage that's coming up, uh, and that's actually obscuring our ability to see the bullseye on the target. So that's a, a realistic component of shooting. On some days, the mirage, uh, it might help you as far as figuring out which way the wind is blowing, but it might also obscure the target a little bit, okay? So go through the video a couple times and try to see uh, what's easier for you.